To be absolutely honest, I don't really care what happens to the Conservative Party. It attacked the very society I grew up in, and even now, it's attacking some of the most vulnerable people, people on universal credit, these thousands of homeless people, some of them dying even as we speak in the cold. I do care, however, about conservatism, because I live on an island where a lot of people call themselves conservatives, and I want to live alongside them, albeit argumentatively, as peacefully as possible. And the problem is, the Conservative Party has gone nuts it's actually abandoned the key principles that define British conservatism. And let's enumerate what they are. Practicality, prudence, restraint. Edmund Burke, he says, look, you know, in the 18th century, look, don't pursue a grand utopia, a grand scheme, an abstract, abstract principle. Burke says, the question of how you get food and medicine is not a theory, it's how do you get it? Well... Theresa May is now risking no food and no medicine on the 29th of March in a no-deal Brexit. That is a total break from the philosophy that most Conservative politicians say they represent. And let's understand why. Historically, the Tories have represented a top layer of British society, top business people, landowners, um, lawyers and barristers, that kind of person. But... In the last 30 years, the Tory party, and unfortunately at one time, the Labour Party as well, came to represent a global elite, a bunch of people who don't really care about countries and societies, who can make money out of volatility, out of financial speculation, and keep their money offshore. And calling the shots in the whole hard Brexit process have been key business people, hedge fund managers, fund managers, offshore tax wonks, um, People who don't really need prosperity in Hull, Scunthorpe, Hartlepool, Wigan, Newport, Gwent. None of that matters to them because the financial markets, well, you can make money there wherever your money is and wherever you live. And I think that's what's happened to the Tories. They've been captured by a bunch of people in whose interest they don't have to think about how do we keep British society stable? How do we keep food on the table of people? How do we keep hospitals supplied with medicine? They don't really, I mean, it, they could, they think about it in a kind of philanthropic way, but it doesn't actually matter to them. Now, there are Tories who see this, and I think there's a, a big split happening in the cabinet. You know, this is why all the distractions about Jeremy Corbyn are happening, because there's a massive split in the cabinet. The cabinet is split between hard Brexiteers who are prepared to risk catastrophe, May, who is clearly running the clock down, burning her own political capital just to try and get this deal. When it gets voted down, likely she's out. And a bunch of people like Amber Rudd and David Gork, who I would not agree with politically, but who do seem like they want to try and stop catastrophe. Well, let's talk. There's two routes to stopping catastrophe. One, a very soft Brexit. Norway, talk about it. But if not, second referendum. And in a second referendum, you have to ante up to the British people what kind of deal you actually propose. And if it's not Norway, and it's not Theresa May's deal, which won't get through, and it's not ca catastrophe-ville Brexit, um, it's got to be Remain. And w the sooner Conservative politicians, not the ones who've been Remainers all the time, but the sooner these soft, conservative, liberal politicians be honest with their own voters that Brexit hasn't worked, that what they wanted isn't possible, just like a 16-year-old becoming a striker for Man City is not really possible. It's not really possible what you voted for to happen in reality. So get real. And I don't mean get real in 2019. I, get, I mean get real as we approach Christmas. Because stockpiling food and stockpiling medicine sounds great if you are rich. Stockpiling food right now is going on all over rich England. A turkey, a goose, a side of beef, please. A case of uh, Pouligny Montrachet. Okay? That sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But if you've got nothing, if you're living on 80 quid a week, you can't stockpile food. What you have to do is queue for food handouts at a food bank. Or go to Tesco's and wait until the yellow label remaindered sell-by date food gets put on the shelf at four or five o'clock and use that to feed your kids. A lot of people in Britain are quite apolitical. 
they don't really care. They don't really even see the difference between Conservative and Labour. And that's, a you know, to many of us, a tragedy. But that's true. If you are the party that causes people to go hungry or causes people's gran who needs medicine, needs morphine, okay, to go, in, to go without the morphine, to suffer pain and distress, my goodness, they will remember what party did that. So use this Christmas break to get real about real conservatism. Remember prudence, practicality, non-utopian thought, and above all, the idea one nation. You actually are responsible for the poor and the helpless and the needy. And if you can't stop them facing chaos come March 29th, you do not deserve to even bear the label conservative.